All right, so now that we've talked about transcription and how we get RNA, we're going to talk specifically about mRNA. Now, I really probably should have done this, so let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to put this as specifically mRNA processing. The processes that we're about to see specifically only occur for mRNA, which we're going to be talking about the, in this video, the creation of the 5 prime 7 methyl guanosine cap. So we know that um, mRNA molecules have a 5 prime end and a 3 prime end. Okay? It turns out that the 5 prime end, we're going to have to do some modifications to it i.e. put on this functional group. And the functional group looks like this. So we have this uh, nucleotide right here. Okay, It's going to have a triphosphate uh, linkage right here to another nucleotide. And then we're going to have a 7-methyl guanosine up here. This 7-methyl guanosine cap has several purposes that we know of. Number one, it, it protects the uh, 5 prime end from degradation. Um, you have to have the mRNA stable enough to where it can actually exit the nucleus and have at least some time to be able to tr be translated by ribosomes in the cytoplasm. Um, it turns out that if you didn't have this cap on there, it would degrade much more quickly. So it's very, it makes it more stable and um, resistant to hydrolysis. The other thing, it, other things that it does is it facilitates translocation out of the nucleus. Okay. In other words, you have to be able to get the mRNA out of the nucleus in eukaryotes. There are pores in the nucleus that allow it to move through, but it's known that this cap on here is involved in some of the recognition processes that allow it to move out. The other thing also is when you get to the ribosome, there's a part of the ribosome that recognizes this 7-methyl guanosine cap. So it has three functions like that. And we're going to look at how this cap is added. Now, they haven't obviously done this with structures here, but this is the 5' prime end of the mRNA. Now, here's what's important to think about. Remember when we talked about the mechanism of RNA polymerase? We looked at the mechanism right here. Imagine the very first nucleotide that we use in the, to make the RNA, the very first one. All right? All others, we have 3' prime attack on the 5' prime phosphate, loss of pyrophosphate. All right? But in terms of the very first nucleotide that was added, there was no 3' OH that attacked it. So there was no loss of pyrophosphate, meaning the 5' end of an RNA molecule is going to have a triphosphate moiety on it because there was nothing that attacked the, one, any of those phosphates. That makes it unstable, the fact that there's a three phosphates here. So what we're going to do is use an enzyme called phosphohydrolase, which is going to get rid of the gamma phosphate, the most distal one. Now we only have two phosphates, and then whatever the base is here and the phosphate. Okay. Now we have an enzyme called guanylyl transferase. Guanylyl transferase is going to transfer a guanosine monophosphate onto that, onto the second of those two phosphates. Now what we have is guanine, a guanosine, we have three phosphates and then NP. That's what we have here. We have a guanine, or guanosine because it's the ribose, one, two, three phosphates, and then this nucleotide here. Okay. Now we need to get this methyl group on the 7 position of the guanine base. That's catalyzed by guanine 7-methyl transferase. It uses S-adenosyl methionine or adomet. Adenosyl methionine is the methyl group donor, and you see the methyl group up here. And then when we get this, we can actually methylate other positions as well. Sometimes very close to the 5' prime end, we have the 2' prime hydroxyl group on these ribose rings being methylated. Okay. Now one thing that's also unusual about this linkage is normally when we think of phosphate linkages, we think of them between the 5' prime position of one sugar and the 3' prime of the other. Notice that this triphosphate linkage is between the 5' prime of one sugar and the 5' prime of the next. So it's a very unusual 5' prime, 5' prime triphosphate linkage. And that puts the 5' prime 7 methyl guanosine cap on there. Also notice that cap is charged. It's postulated that that positive charge plays a role in recognition um, in certain areas, particularly in getting out of the nucleus and then also by the ribosome. All right. And one thing that is also known is this enzyme, by the way, this is polymerase, RNA polymerase 2. When, when the mRNA is being made by the uh, polymerase, it sort of is coming out of the exit site right here. This is, the, this is the mRNA in green. And it's picked up by something called a cap synthesizing enzyme. 
Okay, the CAP synthesizing enzyme is a series of these enzymes right here that as the mRNA is coming off, as it's being transcribed, this enzyme is actually putting on that CAP. Okay, and ultimately what's going to happen is once that CAP is added, this is the red part, there's a blue protein called a CAP binding complex that's going to link the RNA polymerase to the CAP. Okay, so that's the cap binding complex. All these things facilitate the cap being added onto there. And then also after that, we're going to splice it, which we're going to see in the next video, how we splice the mRNA and get the introns out and put the exons together. And then at the three prime end, once that's made, we're going to polyadenylate that. All right, so that's how you make the five prime seven methyl guanosine cap. Now, in the next video, we're going to go over the processes of RNA splicing, particularly of mRNA. Join us in that video and make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.